too good to be true. And thank you for taking the time to listen. The subject of today's show is Ouija boards and other g- games aimed at paranormal communication. Before we start getting into details, let's just briefly talk about psychic insight and how we apply it. We choose a subject, then research it, and based on that research, we determine what we think needs to be explained by creating a series of questions. Then Justina provides psychic insight to answer those questions. The psychic insight is narrated towards the end of the show. Accepting the psychic insight is a question of individual belief. Now let's go through the disclaimers. Here are the disclaimers. Neither of us claim to have any expertise in any subjects that we discuss. We relate information we find through research and the psychic insight. We are always delighted to hear from the listeners. The show only lasts an hour. We don't have the time to present exhaustive research on any topic. This means that there will be information that we miss. We want to provide a basis for the psychic insight. We don't care if a theory turns out too good to be true, as the show name suggests. We are only interested in finding out more of the truth about topics. Spirit can only relate insight that is appropriate for our time in history. Free will cannot be affected. Only comments that are appropriate for our time can be given through the psychic insight. Much of the subject matter in shows may have already been covered many times in other media. We want to look into subjects in a new, different way and be thought-provoking. We are not so good with pronouncing names. We apologize. And neither of us have any experience of Ouija boards or of similar games. We have not used any of them. If we have misstated anything about these games, we apologize. Today's subject of Ouija boards and other paranormal games is your suggestion. I was wondering how to start a conversation. Then I remembered the movie The Exorcist, uh, for which use of a Ouija board was at the beginning of the plot line. The movie was so scary, it was banned in the town I lived in. So I had a trip to London to see it. I saw The Exorcist at the Odeon Leicester Square, no less. Around the country where the movie was shown, volunteers were on hand to assist those who were feeling faint or were freaking out. So just mentioning a Ouija board brought back some fun memories. Yes, fun memories of watching a movie I have absolutely no intention of ever watching again. Going to that famous movie theatre where all the big premieres happened was an experience, though. So what part did the Ouija board have to play in the movie? I think the title must provide a clue. The central character is a 12-year-old girl called Reagan. Early on in the story, Reagan's mother talks to Reagan about the board Reagan has has been playing with. A Captain Howdy, apparently not of this world, answers the questions posed by Reagan. This is achieved by guiding Reagan's hand to move the planchette to individual letters to spell words on the Ouija board. Reagan gets possessed by a demon, and then the exorcist is called in. Uh, Not everyone lives happily ever after. The movie did a great job of building up suspense and suddenly making you jump out of your seat. Following the success of The Exorcist, Hollywood made more movies about the occult, including a sequel to The Exorcist, none of which I have ever watched. So what you were saying during your trip down memory lane is that the movie was upsetting for the time and the source of the demon that possessed Reagan was from the Ouija board she used. But what is a planchette? Here's a quote for the planchette from Wikipedia. Quote, a planchette from the French word for little plank is a small, usually heart-shaped flat piece of wood equipped with two-wheeled casters and a pencil holding aperture used to facilitate automatic writing. The use of planchettes to produce mysterious written messages give rise to the belief that the devices foster communication with spirits as a form of mediumship. The devices were popular in seances during the Victorian era before their eventual evolution into the simpler non-writing pointing devices for Ouija boards that eclipsed the popularity of their original form. Paranormal advocates believe the planchette is moved by the presence of spirits or some form of subtle energy, while scientists and skeptics skeptics allege the motion is due to the idiomotor effect." The idiomotor effect is, in simple terms, is making motion unconsciously. In other words, the subject is unknowingly moving the planchette with no influence from a spirit or other entity. Wasn't the movie based on real events? Yes, a series of events in St. Louis in 1949, but experienced by a 13-year-old boy. Here's a quote from the website Prairie Ghosts. Quote, 
Those who have come to believe the boy was genuinely possessed feel that he may have been invaded by an invisible entity after experimenting with a Ouija board. He had been taught to use the device by his aunt Tilly, a relative who took an active interest in spiritualism, spiritualism and the occult, unquote. If there had been no Ouija board provided by Aunt Tilly, there probably wouldn't have been the basis for the movie. So the point is that demonic possession has been linked to the use of Ouija boards in reality. Should these boards not be treated like a game, but rather as a divination tool like a tarot deck? You can buy them anywhere for around $20. According to the company that holds a trademark for Ouija, it is a game for ages 8 and up and for two or more persons. Aid is obviously too young to make informed decisions or use of a divination tools. Where did the name Ouija come from? From a toy company in Pittsburgh who patented it and advertised it as the amazing answering board. Ouija is supposed to be from the French oui and German ja, both meaning yes. That is how the word uh, Ouija, pronounced Ouija, is spelled. Apparently, in 1891, the inventor, Charles Kennard, consulted his board, and that was the name that was spelled out. The story continues with Kennard's partner forcing him out of the company, as well as coming up with a French and German for yes explanation for the name. Kennard's former partner claimed that he was the actual inventor. Later, he died by falling off the roof of the company building. Sounds like both involved had bad luck. The original boards were made out of solid wood, allegedly prototyped by cabinet and coffin maker. There are two rows of the letters of the alphabet, along with the numbers 1 through 9, then 0, and the words yes, no, and goodbye. There are also decorations in each corner, typically including a sun and a moon. The Ouija board incorporates all the alphanumeric characters needed, so no need to write anything. The planchette became simplified, having no wheels, but remained heart-shaped. What are the typical experiences with a Ouija board that fall short of demonic possession as related by Hollywood? I don't think there's anything typical about the experience I've read about. Here's one example from the website BuzzFeed. Quote, when I was a kid, I played with a Ouija board with my friends. Everyone except me believed in spirit, so I kept asking the board to do, a more, to do more physical things like tap my shoulder. The piece never moved, but suddenly my back started to sting. There were three handprints on my back and they were, they were red and puffy like I'd been slapped. I refused to touch a board again, unquote. Here's a second example from the same website. Quote, when I was 15, my grandma asked me to use a board to contact my uncle who died at birth. At first, it seemed we were talking to my uncle, but as time went on, the personality of my uncle changed. He got mean and possessive and finally the spirit told me that if it, it that it had my uncle and was coming for me. I blacked out for a full minute. When I came to, the light bulbs in the kitchen had popped and there was glass everywhere. We never played again, unquote. Here's a third example, again from the same website. Quote, one summer, my friends and I met the spirit of a boy named Jake through my board and my friends kept antagonizing him to prove he was real. We were in the basement when the board said to go to my room. There we found crayons had been knocked over onto my floor and a notebook on my bed opened up with the name Jake scrawled out in big letters. All of us had been together in the basement the entire time and no one else was home. Our friends said we needed to break the board into pieces and stop the evil, so we did, unquote. These are strange stories. You wouldn't think it had been, they'd, any of them had been made up. Maybe to be balanced, we should look at whether there had been any positive interactions with Ouija boards. I found out about author Karen A. Dahlman. Karen has authored a book on how to properly use a Ouija board for positive results. The book is entitled The Spirit of Ouija, Four Decades of Communication. Karen has been a guest on the X-Zone radio show with Rob McConnell. Karen has used a Ouija board since 1973 and has used it as a tool for personal development. She makes the point that if the board is used properly, it can be a great communication tool, making for positive experiences. Also, you don't really need any particular type of board or any particular type of planchette. That's interesting. There may not be anything special about the board or planchette. You can use other objects that may be at hand. But if you make your own device, there's no directions to guide safe operation. There is a revealing interview with Karen on the website ThoughtCo, including a question regarding negative experiences. 
I will quote directly from the article. I've had a few experiences with Miji that could be constituted as negative, and that term I would use loosely. The experiences were negative in that the communication turned into communication by cussing or into manifestations of touching my physical body. This happened two times during my history of using the board. I have found that when earthbound spirits come through, they are still attached to their personalities and will behave like their past life personality. I've also learned that I do not have to engage with such negative cursing or abusive contacts. Just put the board away. I no longer have such experiences because I have established a portal of positive and benevolent communication after much time spent within this realm. It's true. Practice makes perfect. And in this case, positive. End quote. That end quote. That quote implies that only people with a reasonable level of maturity should involve themselves with any spiritual activity. What other question does Karen Dorman answer? She is asked, what is the worst mistake a Ouija board user can make? But I'll have to continue after the short break quoting about her quote about the worst mistake. And you're listening to Too Good to Be True with Justina Marsh and Pete Marsh on the X Zone Broadcast Network www.xzbn.net Did you know that when you're on the road with limited data or Wi-Fi, you can still listen to the Exxon Radio Show with Rob McConnell, The Science of Magic with Gwilda Wiaka, X-1, Dimension X, Space Patrol, and every minute of the Exxon Broadcast Network by calling 213-401-0080, courtesy of Audio Now. No smartphone, app, or internet needed. It saves your data plan, and it's free if you have unlimited minutes. Call 213-401-0080 to listen on any phone, anytime, anywhere. Remember 213-401-0080 for the best of the paranormal, parapsychology, and sci-fi radio programming anywhere. 24-7-365. Gwilda Wiaka's latest book, The Science of Magic, Book of Mysteries, Volume 1, is the first book in a series based on her writings that open every episode of the Science of Magic radio show. Drawing on the subject matter of each guest, and armed with over 40 years' experience in shamanism, 35 years in alternative health, and degrees in psychology and religious studies, Wilda introduces relevant and leading-edge information that supports spiritual evolution and personal empowerment. Rich with wisdom and inspirational quotes packaged in digestible segments, this is a book that will pull you from cover to cover. It will also serve as a daily inspirational reading for years to come. The Science of Magic Book of Mysteries, Volume 1, is available at our website, tsompublications.com, amazon.com, and wherever fine books are sold. Back in Victorian England, a famous theologian posed a perplexing riddle. Why are the two top personalities in the Bible tagged with the numbers 7 and 11? Academics agree the answer is found in the stunning discovery of a hitherto secret Bible structure explained in a new book called The Genesis Grid. The discovery is so simple that preschool children could illustrate it. Certain claims are hugely controversial and may offend some, but at the X-Zone, we've studied this awesome new book and agree with one expert, and I quote, These discoveries appear to be beyond coincidence. So who or what hid this wonderful pattern in the Bible, and what might they do next? Find out more, X-Zone Nation, and read reviews on www.genesisgrid.co.uk. That's www.genesisgrid.co.uk.
welcome back to Too Good to Be True. And before the break, we were talking about Karen Dahlman and different experiences using a Ouija board. And before the break, we were discussing that she was asked, what is the worst mistake a Ouija board user can make? And I will quote again. There are warnings to adhere when using the board and working with this type of communication. This tool, this device truly works and contact with very consciousness can be reached. The concern and warnings I have for others is the ease at which we are able to con make contact that I've seen others become obsessed with it. I am discussing obsession to the point of relying on the communication from the board to dictate their next decision or choice within their life. This is a huge mistake to make. This is not the way to use this tool. Only use this tool for self-growth where the spirits ask you questions to help you probe deeper into your life where you make the decisions and not where you engage with earthbound spirits that attempt to control or play around with your quandaries, end quote. Use the tool for self-growth where the spirits ask questions. That's interesting. The classic representation of using a Ouija board is for the user to ask the questions. She is talking about two-way communication, but who is the communication with? These, according to the article, include ghosts, angels, other dimensional beings, interdimensional beings, and animals, both dead and alive. What is an interdimensional being? Those are beings that have never been incarnated in the physical form. Communicating with animals, that's interesting. Uh, while alive, I think our pets communicate with us extremely effectively through body language and through their, language, uh, their actions. I think there would be more interest in animals that have passed. Aren't the risks, though, of whether or not spiritual activity involves use of a Ouija board? Uh, there is a question in the article on the proper way to use a Ouija board. Yes, there is a proper way. I will quote again from the article on the website ThoughtCo. We must be emotionally and physically available and open and not feeling tired or worn out from the day's events. We must set up a specific space in which we can have an uninterrupted and private time to work the board. It's always recommended to open the space with the burning of a candle or incense, and when we, are, when we complete with the session, to also blow out the candle and incense as a reminder that we are leaving the space. So you enter the space and exit the space with reverence and in ritual, end quote. That sounds like activity that should only be the un under the guidance of a professional, especially without a friend being present. In the movie The Exorcist, Reagan as a child was operating the Ouija board on her own. That appears to be a particularly bad idea, especially for a younger person. At least two people is the norm. The product description for the board game states that when you use the board, you ask a question with a friend. Continuing on the subject of movies, there were two movie releases in 2014 and 2016, Ouija and the prequel, Ouija Origin of Evil. The title of the second movie suggests that Ouija boards should be avoided, but surely the movies were made with the expectation that sales would be increased. Yes, both movies were made by a company that owns the Ouija trademark. Here's a quote from Wikip Wikipedia regarding the first movie. The film was released on October 24, 2014 by Universal Studios. The film was a commercial success, receiving $103.6 million worldwide, over a $5 million budget, but was overwhelmingly panned by critics, end quote. Here is another quote from Wikipedia regarding the second movie. The film was released on October 21, 2016 by Universal Studios, grossing over $81 million. It received positive reviews, with many praising it as a significant improvement over its predecessor. End quote. Sounds like good reviews from the critics don't always sell more tickets. I'm surprised you haven't suggested that Alexander the Great or some South American civilization hadn't come up with the idea in the first place and that nobody should have the trademark. I couldn't find anything solid in that. I, th I think it was all prompted by the Victorian spiritualist movement in the United States. In the aftermath of the American Civil War, families tried to contact departed loved ones. I did find that the University of British Columbia's Visual Cognition Laboratory had studied the use of Ouija boards with the response to the board being more about the ideomotor effect than anything spiritual. In other words, the human mind works on different levels of works on in different levels of consciousness. The subjects in their experience move the planchette, but not consciously. You should have mentioned they didn't have the funding for their work. 
One thing we haven't mentioned is the number of sales of Ouija boards. Yes, an article from the London Daily Mail from before Christmas 2017 claims that Ouija board sales are up 300% in Britain, perhaps making it a must-buy present. Here is a quote from the article. Quote, It's like opening a shutter in one's soul and letting in the supernatural, says Peter Irwin Clark, a Church of England vicar who has witnessed the dark side of Ouija. There are spiritual realities out there and they can be very negative. And he is adamantly opposed to the sale of Ouija boards as toys. It is absolutely appalling. I would very strongly advise parents not to buy Ouija boards for children, unquote. I think that Peter Irwin Clark is only being responsible by advising not buying Ouija boards for children. I think it's time to move on to the game of Bloody Mary. But before that, I think we should mention that there are phone apps for Ouija. Yes, and there are claims that people have become possessed after using a phone app. But moving on, Bloody Mary must be named after Mary, Queen of Scots. Queen Mary, or Bloody Mary, got her name by ordering something like 300 burnings to death and was executed by the order of Elizabeth I, age 42. Here's a quote from the website WordPress regarding the game. Many of us have played the game Bloody Mary as a child. This is a deliciously scary game in which the child turns off the lights, stands in front of the mirror, and says, Bloody Mary, Bloody Mary, Bloody Mary, then turns around three times and says it again. The goal of the game is to entice the ghost of Bloody Mary to appear in the mirror, end quote. That sounds like a bit of a waste of time to me and probably harmless, except the word the, the word child is mentioned. The WordPress article doesn't seem to think the game is harmless. Apparently, there can be possession caused by playing this game. Do we know if anyone claims that there's actually a ghost of Mary Queen of Scots? That's something I know you would have looked into. You can't resist knowing more about historical figures. Yes, in 2012, a group of paranormal investigators called the Midlothian Paranormal Investigation Team reported some unusual findings when investigating the Mary Queen of Scots Visitor Centre in Jedburgh in the Scottish border region. We usually get some surprising or strange answers when we talk about Scotland. Yes, here's a quote from the website. This is Northumberland. Northumberland is a county in England uh, bordering Scotland. Quote, in the past, some people have been, have go, who have gone to the centre have said they have felt a strangeness to the building and have been spooked and startled during visit, visits. The visitors have said they have heard sounds and smelt unusual scents. The building was once a, pri- once a private house and home to Mary Queen of Scots in 1566. Her stay was meant to be short and she became ill and almost died in, in the building. It is, a, it is now home to her death mask. The stone mansion is almost 500 years old and is said to have spooked visitors on on a number of occasions, unquote. Uh, Odor may be a more common word for scent in this context. The article continues with some of the team's experiences. The names Mark and Pauline, referred to in the upcoming quote, are members of the Midlothian Paranormal Investigation Team. Quote, whilst going in... Going for a break, I left the camcorder and digital voice recorder running in Mary's bedroom. This is called a lockdown because no one is there except equipment. Afterwards, when we examined the film, we picked up an orb moving on camcorder. Mark said that they did a Ouija session on the large 16th century oak table and immediately got family who have passed away coming through first. They were bringing other people too, he added. Whilst in the banqueting hall doing the Ouija board, we were hearing sounds around us, clicking noises, ruffles of dress and footsteps in the room next door called the Rogues Gallery. Gallery. When we were at the table doing the Ouija board session, Pauline mentioned the name of Lord Darnley and we heard noises coming from the gallery next door again, unquote. One of the investigators went to the Rogues Gallery, which is a room with a collection of paintings of historical figures and took pictures. In one picture, there was an orb moving. Uh, there is there is an orb above the portrait of Lord Darnley. I'm sure you're going to tell us who Lord Darnley, Darnley was. Yes, he was Mary Queen of Scots' second husband, who allegedly murdered Mary's Italian private secretary David Rizzio in front of her. Lord Darnley was allegedly murdered by the Earl of Bothwell, who later became Mary's third husband. 
The paranormal investigators obviously believe that a Ouija board could be a useful paranormal tool. What else came out of the investigation? When Mary was asked if she could be asked a personal question, the glass they were using as the planchette went to the word no. The ghost or spirit of Mary, Queen of Scots, may be active and possibly the game of Bloody Mary may not be all that harmless. But what actual experience have been there for people playing the game? There are some horrible accounts of experiences. I didn't find a positive experience. Here's just one account as an example of no permanent consequences from the website Thought Catalog about a girl named Nikki. And I quote, We chanted Bloody Mary three times and nothing happened. So we just laughed it off and turned the lights on. We were lying on the floor getting ready to go to bed when we heard someone walking up and down the hallway and we knew we were the only ones home. Then I saw the hall light come on and my bathroom door flew open and the tap started running full force and the shower came on. My friend Macy went and turned everything off and suddenly it was calm. Then we heard drumming their fingers on my door outside in the hall. We all held up our hands to show we weren't doing it and it kept going. I jumped up and flung the door open and it stopped. Then my closet doors burst open. We started praying that it would all stop and suddenly it did. Nothing has happened since and I am so glad. But we'll have to continue talking about the different paranormal games, including Bloody Mary, after this short break. And you're listening to Too Good to Be True with Justina Marsh and Pete Marsh on the X-Zone Broadcast Network. Broadcast studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada, to the world and beyond. You're watching the Exxon Broadcast Network, www.xzbn.net. ABS Media Day. The scientist and the mystic have been on an age-old, relentless search with one thing in common. They seek truth. Their paths converge in the 40,000-year-old practice of shamanism, an ancient science delving to the quantum level of life, facilitating healing, manifestation, and evolution. I'm Gwilda Wiecka, the founder and director of Path Home Shamanic Arts School, a unique Colorado State-certified occupational school, training shamanic practitioners and teachers. We also provide classes for empowering personal lives through shamanism. Our certification classes are in week-long segments, enabling international participation, and online classes and long-distance shamanic healing sessions are available. Come discover the science of magic in the limitless world of shamanism. www.findyourpathhome.com Did you know that when you're on the road with limited data or Wi-Fi, you can still listen to the x Radio Show with Rob McConnell, The Science of Magic with Gwilda Wiaka, X-1, Dimension X, Space Patrol, and every minute of the x Broadcast Network by calling 213-401-0080, courtesy of Audio Now. No smartphone, app, or internet needed. It saves your data plan, and it's free if you have unlimited minutes. Call 213-401-0080 to listen on any phone, anytime, anywhere. Remember 213-401-0080 for the best of the paranormal, parapsychology, and sci-fi radio programming anywhere. 24-7-365. Rob McConnell here, presenting an overview for Nicholas Paul Jinnick's, author of a fascinating book, Amen. It presents facts revealed by Egyptologists, facts that enable us to understand why Amen is the beginning of creation of God. It provides recommendations for religious leaders of the major religions to unify their beliefs and teach the Word of God, love one another. Amen informs people how mankind conceived God. It was the Egyptians that developed the concepts of a soul, a hereafter, and son of God, and finally, After the worship of many gods, they conceived the belief in one universal God, the maker of all there is. 
For more information, visit www.futureofgodamen.com. That's www.futureofgodamen.com. Welcome back to Too Good to Be True. And before the break, we were discussing the game of Bloody Mary, and I just quoted a experience from Thought Catalog about a girl named Nikki. There are accounts where there have been permanent consequences, unlike the story about Nikki. Presumably, people have been willing to recount their own personal experiences with this game just to warn others. There appears to be no reward or nothing positive arising out of taking a completely avoidable risk by not playing the game. Changing the subject, you mentioned games they play in Japan with ele- uh, a game rather they play in Japan with elevators. This is all completely new to me. Yes, in Japan and in Korea, and it does involve elevators. I am only going to provide an idea of the so-called game, but not how to play. You need to find a building with a minimum number of floors. You get in an empty elevator alone. You go to certain floors and turn. If anyone random gets in the elevator from any floor, you will have to start again. But when you get to a certain floor, a young woman will get in the elevator. You mustn't look at her in the eyes or say anything. Then press a button for another certain floor, and the elevator will not go there, but will go to another floor and into a new dimension on your own. To get back, you reverse the sequence in the elevator, but with no guarantee that it will actually work. This all sounds fake to me. Has anyone claimed to have gone to a parallel dimension and returned? I haven't found anyone who claims that they succeeded in getting to a parallel universe and returning. I also think that this is all fake. Do you have any other supposed games you want to talk about? I think we need to talk about the game Charlie Charlie that got popular in the English-speaking world in 2015. Apparently, in Hispanic cultures, the game is typically played by teenage girls wanting to know which boys like them. Yeah, I'll quote from Wikipedia on how the game is played. In an early version of the game, two players each hold two pencils in the shape of a square, pressing the ends of their pencils against the other players. Like a Ouija board, it uses the idiomotor phenomenon with players moving the pencils without conscious control. The two-pencil game involves crossing two pens or pencils to create a grid and then asking questions of a supernatural entity named Charlie. The upper pencil is then expected to rotate to indicate the answer to such questions. The first question everyone asks by speaking into the pencils is, can we play or are you here or are you there? The top pencil is precariously balanced on a central pivot point, meaning that it can easily rotate on the pivot due to slight wind gusts or the breathing of players expecting the pencil to move, unquote. It seems that it's not far removed from Ouija. Uh, I wonder if Charlie Charlie is just the same idea as Ouija with a different set of props. People improvise with their own equipment, which Karen Dahlman mentioned in her interview. Yes, yeah, so a Bloody Mary, the mirror may just be a prop used with minimum ritual. It may have little to do with a former monarch. It would be interesting to know more about the apparent paranormal going on at the Mary Queen of Scots Visitor Center in Jedburgh. But I think it's time to narrate some answers. Yes, I will ask the first question. Is it true that the idea behind the game of Ouija arose in the Victorian spiritual spiritualist movement or were there similar games or devices in ancient times there were similar different games in ancient times so it is not a new concept did the ancient greeks or ancient egyptians for example involve themselves with similar games ancient civilizations had their own ways to communicate with spirits since the ouija board is mainly used just for communication between the spirit world and the physical world So, for example, the ancient Egyptians had special rituals where they would communicate, including the different rituals they would perform with animals, their own type of priestesses, etc. So it's all about opening a door, but more of a door to the good and bad of the spirit world. So that's the thing with Ouija boards, is that they can be positive, they can have a positive link. But the problem is when you open that door, you can't control what spirits come through, if they're going to be good or bad. Were the real events behind the movie The Exorcist an actual demonic possession from the use of a Ouija board? Yes. 
Is it true that free will can prevent a person from being possessed? In other words, are you only possessed if you allow it to happen? So that's a tricky question. So if someone tries to fight some type of demonic entity, yes, they may be able to overcome it, but it also may be more powerful than they are. So there really isn't a straightforward answer. So it really depends on the situation it occurs in. So it's not really letting something possess someone, more as the beings becoming overcame. So for example, let's just take the exorcist for a moment. In the movie, it wasn't like the person really wanted to be possessed, but they didn't have the power to fight the possession either. Was solo use of board rather than playing with a friend a factor in the user being possessed? That, and also not saying goodbye properly. The word goodbye is on the Ouija board. Do you need to say goodbye properly? Every single time you play, yes. Is a demonic... Sorry, I'll say that again. Is a demonic possession form from a use of a Ouija board a common occurrence? Not really common, but not every possession, but more negative entities and spirits getting into someone's home. So there are many different stories and examples of people who played with Ouija boards and had horrible experiences after. So it's not necessarily getting to the point of possession, but more of hauntings and little annoyances that the negative spirits may do. Which types of entities could possibly use a Ouija board as a means of possessing a human being? So anything demonic could easily use a Ouija board. Negative spirits, ghosts, and even some positive spirits may come through. But for possession, always negative entities. So negative beings, demonic spirits, are the ones that actually cause an actual possession. If you have used a Ouija board and you're not sure what's come through... Is it a good idea to burn sage in your home or somehow cleanse? So the steps if someone does use a Ouija board and they feel like they broke one of the rules and are uncomfortable, the first step is to get rid of the Ouija board out of the home. So the number one rule is not to burn the Ouija board as some people do. If you burn the Ouija board, this basically leaves the door open for the spirits and you cannot close it. So do not try and dispose of the Ouija board in any way such as that. Instead, you want to put the Ouija board somewhere, so bury it somewhere, bring it to an expert. Do not bring it anywhere like a thrift store, since someone else might get a hold of it. So dispose of it in proper means, which the best means is to bring it to an expert or shop that deals with some type of haunted objects. The next step is to cleanse your home. So you can do this through intention and also through burning sage and carrying a white light throughout your home. So you can get sage from pretty much almost anywhere. Make sure you burn it in a safe manner, light some candles, and do an energy cleanse where you go from room to room, covering every closet, every different object you have. So, for example, if you have a dresser, make sure you go past the dresser with a sage and set your attention that the home is being cleared. And go from room to room, and usually the best way to do it is to stop at your front door. So start at the room farthest away, from your front door. And if you really think something's very negative in your home, make sure to set the attention that the home is cleansed and also make sure to protect yourself. So you can just simply state out loud that you're calling in the white light. Were the two individuals involved in marketing the first Ouija boards just unlucky or did the invention have anything to do with one being forced out of the business and the other dying by falling off the roof of the company building? Let's just say that they weren't completely incidences related to the Ouija board. So yes, there was some unluckiness related, but it was also that they played with the Ouija boards. So they invited some negative things into their lives too. So is there any truth in the story of the user of the Ouija board experiencing handprints appearing like slaps on the back? Yes. Is there any truth in the story of the user of the Ouija board experiencing the light bulbs in the kitchen popping? Yes. Is there any truth in the story of the user of the Ouija board experiencing the writing of the word Jake in crayons in a notebook when nobody was around to do that at the time? Yes. Can the Ouija board be used as a tool for personal development with proper communication if used properly? No, it would not be advised for anyone to actually use a Ouija board as a means of communication. There are so many other ways to communicate with past and loved ones that are a lot safer. So the thing is, is that the Ouija board just opens a door that's very difficult to control what comes through, 
whereas a psychic medium, for example, has control over not negative things usually coming through. So yes, proper training is important, but there are so many other ways of trying to communicate than using a Ouija board. Is it possible to truly achieve two-way communication? You mean with regards to the spirit and the human? Yes. Yes. Okay, but there's risk involved. The problem with the Ouija board is that demonic figures do know they exist. So the likely li likelihood of having something negative compared to something positive is way more likely for the negative thing to come through. What entities can communicate with the Ouija board? Do they include spirits that are earthbound and other spirits that are not earthbound? Yes, so technically spirits in heaven of past loved ones could come through, but this is a rare occurrence. Most of the time it would be a ghost, so a spirit is who is stuck on the earth plane, so that spirit could come through or something demonic. So the demons may be on the earth plane, but technically they are not earth plane spirits, if that makes sense. So they will come through, which is what happens a lot of the time. And the problem is with Ouija boards, these negative spirits may pretend to be loved ones, which causes a lot of confusion with the users and can give some very inaccurate messages to the people playing. Uh, I'll ask the next question. I don't think we've got time for the answer. Uh, besides earthbound spirits of ghosts and unearthbound spirits, do angels, other dimensional beings, interdimensional beings, and other animals and animals both de dead and alive come through? Well, to continue with the psychic insight and questions after this short break, and you're listening to Too Good to Be True with Justina Marsh and Pete Marsh on the X Zone Broadcast Network, www.xzbn.net. Named one of the world's greatest psychics, Elizabeth Joyce is now giving readings worldwide via Skype. Elizabeth Joyce is recognized for her clairvoyant ability to help find missing persons, her analysis of dreams, past life regression work, mediumship, and her accurate predictions. Elizabeth has been a frequent guest on the Exxon radio show with yours truly, Rob McConnell, now for several years. For an appointment with Elizabeth Joyce, call 201-934-8986 or Skype at elizabeth.joyce. And for more information, you can always visit Elizabeth Joyce online at www.new-visions.com. The new nonfiction book, Razor of Madness, is similar to cult movies like Clockwork Orange, Dragon's Tattoo, or The Other Side of Hell. Wayne Morin Jr. and Thomas Lee Howe will expose widespread and systematic deficiencies in this thought-provoking tell-all novel. Mind control rages among scholars in law schools. Human rights are ignored while thought reform and mental manipulation are accepted practices used as behavior modification. Dr. Louis Jolion West comes to mind. Media and public scrutiny shows that United States mental hospitals are in fact destructive murder industries. Razor of Madness Expose Novel details this epidemic through an in-depth professional and personal investigation. For decades there has been a revolving door policy that still releases killers and pedophiles back into society. The maestro of mind control continues to haunt America to this very day. Razor of Madness is available in paperback or as a downloadable ebook at Amazon.com. I'm William S. Peckham. If you enjoy a good mystery with a touch of the paranormal, then you'll love my novel, From Out of the Woodwork. It's the story of a young Toronto contractor, Sean Kennedy, who buys derelict homes, guts them, and turns them into multifamily dwellings. Slums just waiting to happen. When Sean buys 29 Livery Lane, the house fights back. Former owners unexpectedly come out of the woodwork as he starts the destruction. The apparitions come to him when he touches old books, reads hidden letters, rummages through old boxes, finds a locket or reads a discovered manuscript of a murder mystery. From Out of the Woodwork will take you from 1899 
to the horror of the World Trade Center, September 11, 2001. Check out From Out of the Woodwork on my website, www.williamspeckham.com. Welcome back to Too Good to Be True. And before the break, we are going through the questions and the psychic insight. So, Dad, can you please repeat the last question you asked? Sure. Uh, besides earthbound spirits or ghosts and non earthbound spirits, do angels, other dimensional beings, interdimensional beings, and animals, both dead and alive, come through? So, again, it's possible. But with regards to animals, that would be a very rare occurrence for animals to use a means like that to communicate. And for other beings, it would not be their communication of choice. So it is possible there may be rare occurrences, but it's not something that is probably going to happen. So it's better not to risk having something negative come through just to play with the Ouija board. How would you suggest communicating with your pet? So obviously there are different pet psychics. So if you do know a pet psychic who actually has good reviews and is renowned, then they are a very good means to communicate. However, the psychic may be expensive for some people. So the other thing that people can do, obviously for free, is if the pet has passed on, is communicate out loud. So call for the pet's name, and you may not get the two-way communication in the means of English or direct communication, but more ask your pet to show you some type of sign that they are there and communicate in their own way. So the thing with pets is it's difficult since it only takes a special type of psychic medium to communicate with them. However, there's always the way of talking out loud and they can hear every word you say. Besides the obvious that two people can look out for each other, why does a trademark holder for the Ouija board game suggest asking a question with a friend? So the thing is, when a person is alone, they're more likely to be able to be influenced. So if there's a second person, there is at least it takes two people and hopefully two logical minds to play the game with the proper rules. So to make sure the circle is never opened and to make sure there's a proper goodbye. So it's just the reassurance that there's another person and hopefully both people will not be influenced. Besides trying to sell more product, why does a trademark holder for the board game indicate that players should be eight years or older when an age of eight is too young for most children to understand the possibility that there, were, there may be a negative response? Basically, it's just to watch their backs. So the age was chosen because of legal reasons. And also the problem is, too, with even younger children playing the board, is that children are much more influenced and have a much more open communication with the spiritual world. So really the age limit should be way higher or the board should not exist at all. Would 21 years or older make more sense? A personal recommendation is to get rid of the boards fully and the creation of them. But if someone really wants to play, even maybe 18 would be right. But again, it's not just something to play as a fun game. So people are curious, obviously, about the spiritual world, but the recommendation would be to stay far away from Ouija boards. What was the motivation for the trademark holder, besides increasing sales, to make two movies, Ouija and Ouija Origin of Evil? To increase curiosity. So people are already curious, obviously, with the whole horror movie genre, the ghost stories, all the different shows and ghost hunting. So this curiosity is what drives sales and makes more movies about what the po different possibilities and implications of using the Ouija board makes people more curious. So the reason the Ouija board became so popular is because people are interested in them and people are buying them. So it's all about their supply and demand concept that there is a demand out there for Ouija boards. If that demand continues, there's just going to be more and more boards made. Was the Victorian spiritualist movement prompted by casualties in the American Civil War with many families trying to contact dead loved ones? Yes. In some cases, at least, is movement of the planchette on the Ouija board just an idiomotor effect response? In some cases, yes, but not all. Is it possible to become possessed by using a Ouija phone app? So technology is more difficult. So it would take a very powerful spirit to possess someone through the actual phone app, but it is possible. What advice should be given to Ouija board or phone app users besides not using them? To follow the rules. So to save the rules that are usually included with a board game. 
make sure to play with someone else to make sure you put up protection beforehand. So calling in the white light. Also having the intention and playing the game that only positive spirits can come through. And even stating this out loud. Making sure that you always have a closed circle. This means that once you put your hands on the planchette, make sure the hands continue to be on until you do say goodbye. And obviously making sure you always say goodbye when you finish using the game. And also making sure you look for signs. There are certain signs that something negative is happening. So if something negative starts happening, such as the planchette starts moving like crazy, starts doing figure of eights, spells out something really strange, candles, light bulbs, something blows out, making sure not to panic, but making sure you say goodbye to the board and make sure you close it out. So the most important rule is once you start playing the game, to always make sure you say goodbye properly. Another rule to never harm the board. So never try to burden it, never try to destroy it, since this will actually make the process worse if something negative does want to come through. Changing subjects, at the Mary Queen of Scots Visitor Centre in Jedburgh, Scotland, are there unusual sounds or odours? Yes. Have people been spooked by being in the visitor's centre? Yes. What was, what was the moving orb observed by the Mid Midlothian Paranormal Investigation Team on the camcorder playback? It was a ghost. Was it the ghost of anyone royal we know of? No. Who were the family and others coming through when the Paranormal Investigation Team were using a Ouija board in the banqueting hall? So that was not actually real family that lived there, but instead negative spirits that were trying to play tricks. Did the spirit of Lord Darnley come through during the Ouija board session? No. Why was there an orb moving above the portrait of Lord Darnley in the rogues gallery? That was the orb of another spirit, but not the spirit they thought it was. So tricks were being played on them? Yes. Did the spirit or ghost of Mary Queen of Scots come through when the paranormal investigation team was using their Ouija board? No. Does the ghost of Mary Queen of Scots haunt the Jedburgh Visitor Centre or any other location? No. Did the events as described by Nikki when playing Bloody Mary actually occur, including the hall lights coming on, the bathroom door flying open, the tap starting running at full furls, and the shower coming on? Yes. Has the game of Bloody Mary got anything to do with Mary, Queen of Scots, or is it just a ritual that alerts entities? The second one, it's a ritual that alerts entities. What should we advise about playing the game Bloody Mary? Just not to play it, especially since mirrors are something that, just like the Ouija board, can be used like an open doorway. So it's a game that originally was just a game that turned into something much more not positive. So the advice is not to play the game, since in certain situations, the game can go wrong and someone will have to deal with something haunting their house. Changing subjects again, is there any truth to the possibility of the elevator game as played in Japan and Korea uh, that it could result in moving to a new dimension? No. Is the game of Charlie Charlie just another form of Ouija? In a way, yes. So if you make up the game yourself with some props, you will still take the same risks as Ouija? So the problem is the intention. So even if someone sits in their house and has the intention to let something bad in, it's still in a way opening that doorway. It's about the intention you said. So it's not really the ritual of their prop, but more the intention. So if someone goes into their home and welcomes something negative, that intention may just drive something negative to come. A lot of the time when people play these games, they have intentions that are not necessarily good. Under what circumstances is it safe to play games like Ouija or Bloody Mary? There really is no safe circumstances. It's just better left alone and instead doing something light and doing something positive. So if someone wants to do something for a loved one who has passed, maybe put out a picture or one of their favorite objects or say a prayer for them. But using a game to contact a loved one is not necessarily what the past loved one would want the person to do either. What can we learn from those who have played games like Ouija or Bloody Mary? That there are so many horrible stories, and there are some that obviously are fabricated, but there are a lot of stories of people playing the different games and negative things happening, and it's not just worth it for a few hours of entertainment. 
And there are so many other things you can do instead of messing with things that people don't completely understand. Well, that was the final answer. I have to ask whether successfully contacting past loved ones by means other than games is too good to be true. That depends on what you are prepared to believe. Well, the message seems clear. Don't play the games. Uh, I was intrigued, of course, by the paranormal investigation team being given a run around during their session with the Ouija board in Scotland. I think it's, it is a good illustration that there's no control over what can ha come through an open doorway. Also, the entities they uh, encountered were not helpful. The unfortunate thing is that if there's no Ouija board game, doesn't mean no Ouija. You can make up the game pretty easily. Also, you stated that if it's only 21 years and older for the board game, that would actually make it more attractive to minors. But at the same time, ages 8 and up would suggest that the game would be harmless for everybody. It seems that parents and guardians and anyone thinking of playing the game need to think about their decision and protect their children. Yes, so I won't be buying a Ouija board anytime soon or playing any games like it because um, I'm taking the um, psychic insight very seriously and I think you'll probably feel the same, Justina. Yeah, I mean, I've always had the gut feeling not to get a Ouija board and just not to mess with it. So as we stated before, we have no experience with these, but we would actually love if anyone does have an experience, hopefully a positive one, not a negative one, to contact us on our Facebook page. So our Facebook page is Too Good To Be True, and it's with the first two spelled T-W-O, and you can go there, like our page, follow us, and we would love to hear if you've had any experiences with any of these games or if you have anything to add to the conversation. And we'd also love to hear future suggestions for any future shows. But you're listening to Too Good To Be True with Justina Marsh and Pete Marsh on the X-Zone Broadcast Network, www.xzbn.net. Modern Esoteric, Beyond Our Senses by Brad Olson, consummates the lifeology story about where humanity originates. It is the lost continents, the primitive wisdom, the mythos of creation, and the rethinking of ancient history as we are taught in academia. There is much more to the story than what we have been told. As this is the first book in the Esoteric series, Modern Esoteric starts at the beginning of time and accelerates up to this modern age. Future Esoteric is book two in the series and takes a forward-looking position ahead of today with an open and honest examination of the ET issue and various unexplained phenomena. To discover the writings of author Brad Olson, visit www.bradolson.com. That's www.bradolson.com. Are you or is someone you know struggling with addictions, depression, anxiety, relationships, low self-esteem, lack of confidence, grief, success, and prosperity? Do you know that your subconscious belief plays a big role in the outcome of your hard work? We can help you permanently change the beliefs that may be the reason for your struggles and failures. We care about getting you the return on your investment and the results you are looking for. We can help you be free of the limitations of your past and in realizing your highest potential. We work with people by phone and Skype. For more information, visit us at www.ritasoman.com. That's www.ritasoman.com. Do you think you have energy problems in your home? Do you feel better when you're away than when you're home? Joey Korn is a global leader in the world of dowsing who specializes in personal energy clearing and space clearing. He can help you create an ideal energy environment in your home no matter where you live in the world. Learn about his remote spiritual house cleaning services and much more at www.dowsers.com. 
You can get Joey's book, Dowsing, A Path to Enlightenment, as well as other dowsing books and tools, Kabbalah books, and Walter Russell books. Joey's work is really amazing. Go to dowsers.com right now. That's D-O-W-S-E-R-S dot com or call 1-877-DOWSING. That's 1-877-369-7464.